Maureen and I'm a Scot living and knitting in New Hampshire and I own and operate the Wooly Thistle. If you love woolly wools or yarns for the story, you have come to the right place and you are most welcome here. So welcome to a new episode. I've tried to come up with a new introduction uh, because I keep forgetting to introduce myself. So I thought it was time that I try and have a, you know, a similar thing that I say every time. But anyway, I hope you're well. It's been a couple of weeks and it's time to get back and talking to you about what I'm wearing, what I'm knitting and what's going on in the shop. And I'm sitting right in front of my latest Stethel right there, which of course, I'm sure you know what it is. And I will tell you about that in just a minute. So I think first up, we should announce the winner from last time. And I have it on my notes here. Uh, every episode, we give away a $25 gift certificate to the Wooly Thistle. And this time's winner is Eugene Diokno. And he said, uh, your shop cast is always a virtual treat. And the Shetland sheep feature was icing on the cake. It always inspires me to keep knitting my Farrell whip. So many knits, so little time. Well, thank you, Eugene. Just send us an email uh, with winner in the ray line or in the subject line, and we will get that $25 gift certificate off to you. Congratulations. And actually, you make me think of um, Rachel, who's... Uh, little snippet we had in the podcast last time. She did such a great job and I did such a terrible job. I forgot to introduce her and I forgot to um, talk about her in in my section of the thing. I just, we just kind of spliced it right in there and that was my fault. So Rachel is a lovely, lovely person. I met her when I went to visit my mom on uh, Fair Isle. Uh, she was actually my mom's neighbor and yeah, she's a great, great girl. And we've we've enjoyed uh, keeping in touch through email and, and Instagram and things like that. So she lives there on Fair Isle year round. Um, she's going to be sending us another video in a couple of weeks. Um, I guess lambing is getting off to a slow start. By the time you're seeing this, she's probably well, well underway, though. And I think the next video she sends us will include some lambing up there on uh, Fair Isle and Shetland. So very exciting. And I should also mention that on our blog, we also have Isla from Orkney uh, checking in with us once a month as well. So come the beginning of May, we should be getting another blog post from her too, which is really exciting. And we have a few more wonderful people in the works to come and share their um, their environment and their love of wool and just, you know, living on islands or what have you uh, from back home from Scotland and England. And so keep watching and keep checking out our blog. It's right on the website down at the bottom or you can click the link at the top. Before I go any further, I just want to say be sure to sign up for our newsletter. Um, you can do that at info at the woolly thistle.com. Remember, there's two L's in woolly. And join us on Instagram and Facebook and all the usual places. We are there. So I should tell you about what I'm wearing today. And I'm wearing this in honor of Shetland Wool Week's uh, patron that was just announced uh, a couple of days ago from when I'm filming this. And that again is Wilma Malcolmson. She is their patron again this year and she was last year. And I'm wearing her seaweed uh, slipover, it's called. And I love this. I do love... Uh, tank top or a vest as you call it here and uh, this one is knitted in Jameson Spindrift and we used to have kits for it but we found it really hard to get the yarn in enough to actually make kits so um, as soon as we can get this color which is Pebble I think it's 127 um, you might be able to start uh, hunting and pecking for those colors to make your own if you're interested in this it's really comfy and it's a great color work uh, project there's no shaping so um, it just is a, just a tube going up and up and up. And then you stick here and here and here for um, these holes, um, which is a really easy way to do some sticking. Um, and then when you cut them, you pick up stitches and you do the armbands and the neckband and you're done. Um, I don't believe, I'm pretty sure I did not do any reinforcements of my sticks. I um I did not. Uh this is just cut because Jameson's uh Spindrift and Jameson's Myth are both very traditional Shetland wools that were meant uh for sticking, I would say. That um and also, you know, I'm not 
I'm not like pulling this and you know pulling on it here and here it's just it's fine it's totally fine no need for any reinforcements there so I'm wearing this we've had a snowstorm since I saw you last uh a lot of snow a lot of snow and it's actually pretty cold that not much of it's melting so even though we thought we were coming into a uh, beautiful spring we are stuck again in winter so this is a nice sort of halfway change of seasons uh knit that i can wear all right so let's get going um so current fo's here we have it this here is the monochromatic tapestry cowl finally finished and i really do like her i'm going to be clashing all the color work but just to show you so here it is full length and oh yes this is really nice and snuggly and warm you can just imagine yourself out there in the winter next year now um all warm and of course this is the original one here in colors thank you so much for the love you've shown this um we have sold so many of these a lot of these and i'm hoping that we can sell quite a few of these too uh as a kit this actually that one takes seven balls this one actually takes six balls because it is just the two colors uh with um the light gray being the background and the black being the foreground so we have these as kits and so these will be going on sale next week from when you're watching this these go on sale uh, april 30th and it's just lovely it's knitted in rama fennel garn which is a fingering weight yarn and it's a pleasure to knit with I think this black and white combo is very, very um, useful for any wardrobe. It's a good staple. And I really like it. I really, really like it. And so this is where I joined. I actually played around and did a, something a little bit different this time. That's not quite the neatest, but it's not bad, actually. What I ended up doing, because you've got... Um, You've got two loops that you're joining together at the end. I actually three needle bound off this end and then I three needle bound off this end. No, I did, I knitted three needles. <laughs> so I didn't bind off, I didn't bind off, but I did knit the two sides together with a third needle on both ends. So three needles, three needles. That got me down to just um, one row each of live stitches. And then I did a three needle bind off for this. And actually this would have looked a lot better if I didn't get that black yarn caught in there. You know, I think that looks pretty okay. Um, and then on this side, this is what it looks like on the outside. So if you're a bit more careful than me, you can match up <laughs> your join a little bit. I was getting, I was getting rushed. I wanted to have this ready for you. So yeah. I think this is really lovely. It's um, exactly the same as this one, except this has a lot more color work going on in it in the sense that we're changing colors, but the actual design is the same. Come on, there we go. But what a difference, huh? This one looks so soft. This one's really punchy. But I love them both very, very much. So I hope you like them too. This is going on sale. This we still have some. We sold an awful lot of them, but we do have more available. And you are welcome to buy the kit for that. And the kit comes with a couple of wee extra bits in there too. I think you get a bag and you get what else you get. Um, I don't remember right now offhand. We'll put a note here. So yes this is what i've been knitting on for the last wee wiley and i'm glad that this is now finished and that is ready for you guys to knit and enjoy too uh, some of you were asking some questions in the comments this time oh and also i'm really really sorry that we uploaded the episode without the shetland piece in there first 
And then when we realized that had happened, we took that one down and we reposted it with it in there. But it meant that a lot of you um, watched the episode where it was just black. Um, and so hopefully you figured out that there is a new version, but if you haven't, you can go back and watch it now because it's up there and you can see Rachel from Shetland and they're really sorry that that happened. Sometimes these things just happen, we have gremlins. But um, I had a couple of questions from viewers and mm, let's see, Moonlore Dancer asked, where in Scotland was your absolute favorite place to spend time? Well, um, I really love the Highlands. Um, we spent all my childhood going up to Inverness and the Highlands, and that would be from the West Coast right over to Inverness. Um, I love it up there, I really do. Um, there are some really beautiful places, uh, beaches like Achmelvich is really nice, or Achelty Bui up there, or um, uh, Clactol, different beaches up the west coast. They're just beautiful and they're deserted and they're freezing cold. You're not going to want to get in and swim really, but it is very, very beautiful. Great for a walk. Um, and the sheep are roaming around up there. So I really like that. But I have to say back in 2017, when I took my kids um, back to Scotland for a month, uh, one summer, me and the two kids went and we were all over the place. In fact, that's when this photo was taken um, on Burnery, which is um, Meg Rogers of Berlin uh, Yarns. These are her sheep here. And I know I've told you about this before, but this was the same trip. Um, we went up to Farrell uh, to visit my mum, who was living there. And we rented a wee crafty house and sometimes when you can see a picture of Farrell with just a few houses dotted on there, I can always find my wee house that I stayed in. It was called Springfield and it was a craft and it was very, very basic. It had no internet and we didn't even have, um, and the whole island at the time was like this, we didn't have um, electricity after 11 p.m. at night and it didn't come back on until seven in the morning. Um, so we had no internet at the house and me and the kids spent quite a bit of time there just playing around outside. The weather was beautiful and um, you could hear the oyster catchers. They sound like squeaky toys. Um, we went for long walks and <sighs> I think because I was able to switch off from the internet completely, like news was happening. I think Charlottesville happened while I was there. I didn't know, didn't know anything. Um, but because I was able to really uh, shut down for a, about a week, um, I have not felt that rested before or since. <laughs> it was really amazing. Even though the kids and I didn't have, you know, anything to do, meaning we didn't have the internet. Um, but we played outside and we went for walks. We found um, all kinds of beach treasures. And of course, we spent time with my mum and they had internet up at their house. So, you know, we would walk up there and, and download a couple of things. And But for the most part, I just listened uh, to audiobooks and I read books and um, it was really, really lovely. And just the countryside there is so beautiful. And we were lucky. We had it when the weather was just perfect. It was actually really warm. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you can ever make it up to Shetland, um, getting to Farrell is really tricky. It all depends on the weather. And if and it, you know, there's no saying that if you can, you know, that once you get there that you can actually get off. So a lot of travelers don't make it to Farrell because, um, you know, it's just too, too risky with the weather that you might get stuck and stranded there. But if you're okay with that, it's well worth it. I think I would love to make it to St Kilda. Um, I think uh, just walking around there. Other places I really like though include Orkney um, and uh, you know all the old uh, historic prehistoric uh, standing stones, you know, Scarabray, places like that. So I really do like the islands and I like the highlands. Um, I love Inverness. I mean, it's a shame Inverness is a bit tired looking these days, mainly because I think that retail has moved out of the downtown area and has moved out to these cow fields, you know, just like we have here where you drive to this big area and it's all, you know, purpose built shopping out there. Um, that's happening over there. And it's such a shame because it makes downtown boarded up. Um, uh, but, you know, I remember Inverness as a thriving 
small city that um, has a lot of really great architecture. Um, and then of course, right outside Inverness, you've got Culloden and you've got the Black Isle, which is where Julie is from. Hey Julie, if you're watching, uh, Julie has Black Isle yarns, which is just phenomenal. Um, yeah, so I love it. I love, I love the Black Isle. I love um, the highlands and islands for sure. I love the Western islands, you know, going to sky is really nice. I could go on and on and on. I won't. Um, somebody else though asked about Jameson and Smith and the different, um, the different yarns and what, what their differences are. Um, and so I thought I'd give you a quick tour of Jameson and Smith and I thought I'd just start with um, their two ply. So here we have their two ply Jameson and Smith. And their two ply jumper weight is, you can knit it like a fingering weight or a four ply, but it is a little bit thinner. I think you get 100 and, what do they say? Yeah, 125 yards per 25 grams. So that is 250, ooh, that's like a thousand, no, 250, that's 500 yards for 100 grams. So that is like a thin four ply, but it's woolen spun. And so when it is blocked or you wash it, it floofs and it fills in all any spaces between your color work. Uh, but you don't have to knit color work with this. You can knit um, lace. Shetland is very famous for its lace work. Uh, so the only thing I wouldn't probably knit with it, honestly, it would be cables or any sort of textured knitting. It just, it's a two ply, so it's fairly flat. Right, so this is the two ply. It comes in lots of natural shades and colorful shades. There's over 90 of them. So that is that. And then you have um, their Supreme, which is only available in nine shades. They're all natural. And it comes in 50 gram balls. This one's rather odd, oddly shaped. Sorry, she's got a big, she's got a big bahookie. All right, so anyway, there she is. And she has 188 yards in this 50 grams. So that would be, I don't know, 490 something. Um, so it is slightly thicker than your two ply. It is still a two ply though. And these are both woolen spun. This one's got a slightly more grist, slightly heavier. Um, but you can use these interchangeably and right up here can you see um these are the colors for jameson and smith's um um shell and wool week hat that wilma malcolmson just designed and uh, these are the colors that jameson and smith's hats got we'll put a picture here of what that looks like um right so the supreme is slightly heavier but that's about it it's a wonderful all natural nine color uh, range and um, my silver forest sweater uh, is knitted in this and we've got a picture here and we do sell kits of this for that when we have it in stock next up from Jameson and Smith would be their um, heritage range and this range is worsted spun which is kind of unusual, but it's also very lightly spun and it's very soft and fluffy. And this yarn range is made to create uh, or recreate the historical archives from the Shetland Museum. There's madder, you know, so they're dyeing with very natural colored dyes. So this would be indigo and uh, yes, there's madder. And then there's a whole range of natural shades as well. And I just picked this one here. This one is called black. Look at how thin it is. This is the worsted spun versus a woolen spun. I think that's a good <laughs> representation of how the, the worsted spun is more dense than a woolen spun. And if you don't know, uh, a woolen spun is when all the fibers are all jiggledy piggledy and they all get fed in and spun and they're all going every which way and it makes for a very, it traps a lot of air. So it makes for a very warm, lightweight finished object, whatever you're knitting with it. Worsted spun, um, all the fibers are organized before they get spun. And so they're more like this. And so that does make for a tighter packed, more dense yarn, but it also makes for a less 
maybe itchy yarn, if, if that's a word you want to use. Um, and it makes for more of a sheen as well because the fibers are going in the right direction. So the heritage is very traditional. It's worsted spun and it's beautiful though. It's really lovely. And you can knit all kinds of things with this. There's the Feral Kip Kip that we do, which has all the colors in it for, um, for a big triangular um, Feral Kip, which is a cap. We all know that now. And um, I think um, Kate Davies has done a few designs. Uh, I can think of her sheeps and her rams and yows design that hat. And also the big blanket that she did with all the sheeps and the horns and everything that was using this in all the colors. Just lovely. And the last thing we have from Jameson and Smith is their two ply cones. These are 500 grams, which is like, how many is that? 20 balls. <laughs> so this is a great deal. Um, I have knit directly from these cones. It's great. You just sit it on the floor and you just uh, knit right off the cone. And, you know, when you have these natural colors, you're going to use them uh, over and over in lots of different projects. At least I have found that to be the case. I've knitted a Hansel hat with mine. I knitted my Star Cardi off a cone. Uh, well, the other color I knitted, um, yeah. So, ooh, here we go. My Star Cardi, I knitted with uh, color 27 off the cone and the dark 81 I knitted uh, with balls. So totally the same yarn, just that the cone has not been um, washed or anything. So it may still have the uh, spinning oil on it. So it makes it a little bit flatter or ropier feeling when you're knitting with it, but I don't mind that at all. And then as soon as you uh, block it, it just blooms and is beautiful. So that's everything from Jameson and Smith and some of their differences and similarities. They are all made from uh, wool from Shetland sheep on uh, Shetland. So there's that. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know. Okay, so let's get into what we have in the shop right now. Um, we have lots of pre-orders still going on, including 52 Weeks of Shawls that is releasing on April 30th. And we actually have them here now and we are getting them ready to go. So if you have ordered that, uh, we will be in plenty good time to get that to you for the 30th of April, which is exciting. Usually it's the last minute and we are really working hard to get those all out. But but Lina actually got them to us in, in good time. And so if you have um, other things in your order as well, that's great. We're getting them ready for you. Uh, Lina 11 as well, that comes out on May 7th. We don't have that yet, but as soon as that comes in, we'll be getting them ready out to go out on May 7th. Um, just a beautiful issue. I love I love the, co the cover. Um, by hand, 15, which is from Rhode Island. Um, can't wait to see this. I always enjoy this magazine. Um, so we have those on pre-order right now. And of course we have Shetland Wool Adventures 1 and 2. Both of those are on pre-order and they're due out at the end of May. What do we have on the shelves of happiness right now? Well, here you can see a lot of beautiful colors. These are what we have available in Rowan Felted Tweed. And I wanted to show you um, an FO that I have in Rowan Felted Tweed. And this is the Rosamund sweater. It's one of my favorites. And I knitted this. This is a Marie Wallen design. It was from her um, Bloomsbury book. Sorry, the color is getting blown out there. It's this gorgeous green though. I would never have knitted this sweater as an English style knitter. <laughs> you have to be a continental knitter, I think, to put up with all that ribbing. But with it, it was no problem at all. It's funny that, isn't it? Um, so yes, that is an, a finished object that I enjoy. This is one that before I blocked it, I was I was absolutely devastated. I thought it's disgusting. I hate it. It looks horrible on me. Um, and after I blocked it, I was like, I love this. I love this. And it's like, you know, the wonders of blocking never cease to amaze me, honestly. So let me show you some of these. Um, let's see what we've got here. Yes, I knew that was going to happen. So we have, you know, this lovely Rowan Felted Tweed. Many of you are very aware of Rowan Felted Tweed. It's been around a long time. It's a Yorkshire company. 
but you know, they're a huge company. Um, this is the only Rowan we stock and it's got this lovely, it's a DK weight and it's got these lovely tweedy bits in them. There's a little bit of alpaca in there and there's even a little bit of viscose and it's gorgeous. So there's that and there's lots and lots of colors. Let's have a looky here. These are all new colors to us and they're gorgeous. Oh. Um, Maggie was telling me that somebody knitted their Henrietta. Ooh, we're getting closer. We're getting closer to having Henrietta. Her eyes are so bad. I need to redo them. Having Henrietta be um, a kit uh, in Rama Strickgarn. But Maggie was telling me that she's seen that somebody knitted them in Rama. Fen uh, no, Rowan fell to tweed. So that's an interesting idea on that. Let me put you back here. Right, so we've got lots of colors of Rowan Felted Tweed. Do, do check it out. Um, brand new and coming to the shop. We have lots of cocoa knits, brand new. So this is the, um, what do they call this? The magnetic slap wrist thingy me so this here is basically a bracelet and it's one of these slap ones I'm not going to do it because it's all lovely and tidy right now and it's got a magnet on it to keep all your bits and bobs so I know that this has been a really popular seller um, and so we have that in pink and we have it in blue as well so we have these two colors This is probably one of my favorite things that we got. It comes in this lovely wee box and it is the needle gauge. And it is just really compact. So you have to find your, um, and then you can put your needle in or actually you'll do it like that. Put your needle in and you'll know what size needle you've got. Just such a pretty juicy little thing, isn't it? I love that, it makes me happy. And we also got their flight of stitch markers. It comes in this lovely box and you open it up. Full of stitch markers, really nice. And these I'm really excited about is their snips. So just very kind of rough, you get a little leather sleeve for it. So those are them, really nice. We got a double ended crochet hook um, and that is uh, really useful to uh, save your drop stitches. Although honestly, if you knit with woolly wool, you probably don't need this at all. But every once in a while we drop a stitch and um, this will help you get things back up to the top, which is good. And then we have some bent tapestry needles in here. Uh, having them be a little bit bent is useful because we're using this to maybe do a mattress stitch. And so you don't want it to go down and up. You want it to go like that, yeah. So we got some of those. And then finally, we got uh, two different versions, two different colors of their, um, what do they call this? I can't remember what they call this, but it's a lovely sort of little bucket. It's got pockets and you can sit this on the floor next to you. Or if you have a big enough tote, you can put this right in the bottom and it's an organizer. But this is nice for keeping your yarn in while you're knitting. It can sit on the floor next to you. There we go, really, really nice. So that's what we've got new from Coco Knits, which is nice. We also have coming, um, just as this is coming out, we're waiting for it to get here, so hopefully it's here, Blacker Gotland, which is uh, their brand new Gotland uh, run, and there's eight colors and uh, a natural. So I'll put a picture of that here. Hopefully we have that, it's supposed to be here for, for today. Um, and also their Jacob Blacker Jacob, um, they've just had a new run of that. So we'll be getting that in the shop right away. And what else I want to show you? Fair Magazine. 
Uh, we're currently at the time of recording this sold out, but I hope to get some more. Um, this finally came in. It's an uh, it, it's a beautiful magazine. It feels really, really nice. Here's the back. Look at this artist working with all her wool. So this is not a knitting mag magazine per se, but this is definitely a maker's magazine and it's so aspirational and colorful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, these people are just sort of living the creator's dream, aren't they? Let me show you. Yeah, we got this moody guy. I think he's a hat maker. So the photography is beautiful. The feel of the book is beautiful. Oh, I love that. Just lovely. Interesting people and their stories. So yeah, we did sell out of this, but hopefully we'll get a few more. And that is Fair Magazine. Issue number one is brand new. Um, Shetland Wool Week, we still have uh, copies of that if you want to get that. We also have Mittens from Around Norway and Nina's other book, which is Socks from Around Norway. We have loads and loads of stuff. Let me show you the colors. So these are the colors for De Crofter's Kip. And De Crofter's Kip is this year's uh, Shetland Wool Week hat. I'm sure you know that. And the Jameson and Smith colors, first of all, for their base, they're using this lovely dark chocolatey brown and it's from the Supreme range. This is a natural brown, it's number 2005. And it's beautiful. And then for the contrast colors, it's very interesting. Um, I'll put a picture of the hat here again for you. And here you can see. So these are the colors for the hat. Now, unfortunately, let me see. This one, I believe, is out of stock at Jameson and Smith. They're working hard to get it. So we're in a bit of a pickle because we don't have very much of it left but when we do get it back this will be the colors for the jameson and smith hat and then for uh jameson spindrift it's a blue hat and we are getting those in we should have them in any time um, as soon as possible so that's exciting so we have set up um, a product page for the jameson and smith if you're interested in knitting in that you can leave um, your email address on the notify me link that way when we do get this back in stock you will get notified um, but until we get this uh this one here back in stock uh, at jameson and smith we'll be a wee bit stuck um, and as soon as we get the Spindrift colors, we'll put them in the shop right away. And that is already set up as a kit in the shop, which is just lovely. Felix Sweaters and Cardigans by Savory Knits, who is Amy Christopher's. Um, we have been selling kits for these for the last couple of weeks, and we've just expanded the colors um so to have more colors available to you basically so do check those out in the shop this is a well-worn very comfy um sweater in let lopi i really like that and the kits are really good they're they're doing well um also here we have the tea tree lights which is a let lopi sweater designed by jennifer steingas we sell kits for this and actually maggie um knitted this maggie is uh a friend and she also works here at the Willie Thistle. So she knitted this and let me have it to show you. It's beautiful. It looks so good on her too. Um, really nice shaping across the yoke. And of course, Jennifer Steingast, she can do no wrong. That's just a lovely, lovely let lopey sweater. And this here, you know, I don't need to tell you that that's a vanilla sweater sitting there. <laughs> um, what else do we have? Ooh, I wanna show you buttons. Let me find my buttons. So we recently started selling these pewter buttons and they're coming to you in sets of three. This one's a paw print. These are really, really well made. This here is just an interesting sort of swirly round button. This one is gorgeous. Can you see it's a little tree? 
you probably can't see this, but on the tree, there's a little bird. The detail and the crispness of the uh, casting is really good. And then here we have these little round buttons. These are all about 10 or 11 millimeters across, which is sort of a 3 8 size. Um, I think we'll be using these unless we can find a square one. I don't have, I did have one square button, but they didn't have enough of them. Um, so we'll be using these on the Star Cardi kits, which are coming out. They are coming out. And that'll be on there. Isn't that pretty? So it's the perfect size. Um, and if we can get square ones, we'll get square ones too. But um, yeah, this is the Star Cardi, as you know, by Donna Kay. Uh, kits for these are finally coming together and we should be launching these on April 30th. Right, um, I haven't really shown you what I'm knitting on. That's because I'm not really knitting on anything right now. But I was knitting my little bag and I love the inside as much. Look, I made this a long time ago and I did all this. I love his little, her little knee there. Can you see? Going for a walk. Little sheepies. Anyhow, um, I started knitting with my Exmoor sock yarn. It's looking a bit beat up in my bag here. Um, Bluebird Cafe socks by um, this Handmade Life, who is Olivia and she's lovely. Can't see it, but I have a quilt of hers up there. And um, I started knitting these. I think her pattern is toe up. And I think I'm knitting these cuff down. Well, I am knitting these cuff down, I know that. And I think I thought I didn't really like the pattern with this um, yarn. So it was in time out. And when I looked at it again, I thought, you know what? I actually really like that. It's fluffy. And I think once they've had a wash, things will open up where they're supposed to. So I might just keep on knitting on this. I do have other knitting. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> I do have other knitting. Um, a few of you asked to see my uh, ridiculous ranunculus. So here it is. I'm knitting this in... Uh, Devonia, which is beautiful and dreamy, but I've had a terrible time with this ranunculus. It's been in time out for quite a while um, because I just can't seem to get the numbers right. I I increase or decrease too much or not enough or I don't know. It's been a while. I need to sort of um, rip most of this out, I think, and I'm reluctant to because I've done it more than once. But if nothing else, you can see what lovely um, open, airy yarn this is. And I think, I think it's really hard to show you because it's on a needle and it's all squinched up. But I had just got to the point where I was uh, dividing for the sleeves. The color is lovely. I love the color. It's very stretchy, the way it's knitted. It's just wrong. I need to start over. But this is Devonia 4-ply by John Arbin in the broken flower colorway this lovely kind of milky pink which I really like this would be a nice sweater for spring wouldn't it right so I think that's it yeah so I hope that you will want to give the tapestry cowl a spin I know many of you have been waiting for this monochromatic kit so it should be with us in no time at all we're just waiting for the yarn to come in um it's uh you know we're still dealing with covid i just had my um second uh vaccine on friday and i was fine for 24 hours absolutely fine and then ex almost exactly 24 hours later i went down um achy and just feeling really awful um so I took it easy yesterday. I would have recorded otherwise, but I just couldn't get myself in here and be peppy and things like that. It was just, I know I needed to go to bed. Um, but I woke up this morning totally fine. I, I don't know how I got into this, this subject here. But anyway, oh yeah, COVID. So we are still waiting for um, yarn to come through from Norway. Uh, we are still dealing with COVID issues and, you know, people still having to... Uh, 
to be distant and not too close together which just slows everything down even though the mill is working around the clock so thank you for your patience it is totally worth it um i am gonna love this it's a really fun knit It is a really fun knit and even better, it's a really fun FO to wear. You really can't go wrong with it. It's going to fit you no matter what. So you don't need to worry about gauge too, too much. There's enough yarn for um, to even make this a little bit longer if you wanted to. But this is the perfect uh, length for a lovely scrumptious uh, wrap around in the winter. Um, or whenever you want to wear it. I think you could knit this. This is a nice uh, project to knit actually through the warmer months too because it's not covering you and draping you like a giant sweater would. So I hope you like this. Um, we do still have kits like I mentioned for the uh, colorful cowl as well. I love both of these. I love knitting with Rama, it's my favorite. Um, apart from Jameson and Smith, which is my other favorite. <laughs> So I think that's all I have for us this time. I hope that you are keeping well and knitting lots. Uh, do leave us a comment down below so that um, I can see who you are and who's watching. And um, everybody who leaves a comment will be entered to win for the $25 gift certificate next time. And I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting. Bye for now.